God, that as we go through this week, God, we don't know what we're about to face. But we know, Father, Lord God, that in the midst of your presence, you give us strength in the midst of our weakness. You give us joy, Father, Lord God, in the midst of our sorrow. You give us beauty for ashes, Father, Lord God. Here, Father, Lord God, we can lay down our burdens, Lord God, because in fact, you invite us to cast our cares upon you for the very fact that you care for us, God. You ask us, O oh God, to come as we are in terms of our spiritual well-being, God. No matter how broken we may be, no matter how confused we may be, no matter how disoriented we may be, Father, O oh God, you say, come. You say, come. Because you, O oh God, are the answer for everything. And so, God, while we are in these four walls and through the way of YouTube, Father of God, you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can even fathom in our minds, that, that we can even conjure up, that we can even think, oh God. This is a place of refuge. This is a place of healing. This is a place where we have come to be restored, where we have come to be refueled, we've become re-energized, Father of God, because we don't know what we are about to face when we leave these doors, oh God, but you know, and you give us exactly what we need, oh God, to make it through this week. Hallelujah. Some of us are here today in pain. Some of us are here today hurting on the inside, God, but you, oh Father of God, have come to bring relief, oh Father of God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, because you, oh God, are a healer, oh God, of mind, body, and soul, Father of God. Hallelujah, oh God. Your word, Father of God, is a word that when it goes out, it never returns void, oh God. It always accomplishes the very thing that it is set out to do, Father of God. And your word has been sent to bring healing, oh Father of God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so God, no matter whatever it is that we're facing today that we have come into this place, pray, God, that when we leave here today, oh God, we would leave here, Father, oh God, a different way, oh God, a more excellent way, Father, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh Father, oh God. And so, Father, I pray that you anoint, oh Father, oh God, every aspect of this service today, Father, oh God. Father, oh God, from the sister Brenda that's coming to read, oh Father, oh God, to sister Sheila that's coming to bring the word, Father, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we thank you, we bless you, oh God. We thank you, God, for an opportunity, oh God, to hear from you, Father, oh God. Hallelujah, oh God. There are places in this world, Father, oh God, where they would be still, oh God, from preaching the word of God. But we have free access, oh God, to your word on high. And so, God, we thank you for the freedom that we have. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. The scripture reading will be taken from 2 Peter, from verse 10 to 18. Sorry, not the second, the third chapter, sorry. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for the hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with favoring heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise, look for new heaven and new earth, wherein dwelling righteousness. Wherefore, we love seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our, even as our behold brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him has written unto you, as also in all this special speaking unto them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are 
unlearned, unstable rest, as they do also and other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye known that these things before beware, lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfast, but grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. This is the reading of the word. Good morning, Elizabeth Estates. Hallelujah. Our God is worthy. Our God is holy. Our God is omnipotent. Our God is all in all. Today we reverence our God because there is no one like him. So sing with me today.
you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Let's go. Oh, Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You set your glory above the heavens and the earth. And when I think of all Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Oh, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty, Lord, you're mighty, Lord, you're mighty, say, Lord, you're mighty, Lord, you are mighty, Lord, you're mighty, Lord, you're mighty, say, Lord, you're mighty, Lord, you're mighty, Lord, you're mighty, say, Lord, you're mighty. Hallelujah. Our God is awesome. You go outside at night and you look up. Sometimes you got to shut up and look up. And when you shut up and look up, you realize you're small. <laughs> you puny. You're insignificant. <laughs> and that God is bigger. Our God is great. Lord, we surrender to your greatness today. We put aside our own little mind, our eye view, God, our, our understanding of everything. We surrender to your greatness today. We will be still and we will acknowledge that you are in control, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I need now under your wings cover me within your mighty when the ocean rises and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. For Father, you are king over the flood. Yes, I will be still, know you. Our God, I will be still, know you, our God. Find rest, my soul, in Christ alone. Just know his power in quietness and trust. And when the oceans rise and the thunders roar, I will say.
some lunch and the thought came to me it's like what if God what if we understood how God sees his children we know that we belong to him but what if we saw it from his viewpoint what you looked like to God what he feels when he sees you I got to the restaurant I kid you not and when I got in I saw to the side there's a small table two chairs a little girl and I don't know I think it was her dad but he was huge he was a big man he was not small and they were sitting there having the sweetest conversation she must have been four and eventually she got out of her seat and she went over to her dad she sat in his lap and she just put her whole body over his chest and she just relaxed there I was like look at God <laughs> Look at God. If men, if people, human beings who are fallible know how to take care of their children, to offer them a place to rest, how much more does your Father in heaven who made you knows everything about your entire being how much more does he want you to come and rest on him? He is a good father. Hallelujah. Let's trust him today. I don't know what you need to rest on his chest, but you need to believe that you have a good, good father. Hallelujah. Oh, and I heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like but i've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night till you tell me that you're pleased in that i Never alone, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, and I've seen many searching for answers, both far and wide, but I know. We're all searching for answers, only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word, you're a good, good father, 
It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I am loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I am loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Let's sing it again. Do you believe that he is perfect in all of his ways? You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Oh, in love, so undeniable, I, I can hardly speak, and peace so unexplainable, I, I can hardly think as you call me. Deeper still, yes, you call me. Deeper still, yeah, you call me. Deeper still into love, love, love. You are a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I am loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I am loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saves. A wretch like me, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to. And grace my fears relieve. How precious is that grace appears. Believe. 
that's fine. Through whom many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Good, good Father, 
It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I am loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for grace without measure, for love without measure. We bless your name as your children, and we give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I feel God's presence in this place. Good Father. Just before Sheila comes to minister, Minister Sheila's going to come in a minute. Lift your hands in this house. And like little children wanting to be picked up, wanting a hug, wanting those words of affirmation, want to feel safe, like little children, just want daddy to be there. And as you lift your hand in his presence, I trust you can feel his love. Father, shower us with grace today. Hold us. Be with us. Love up on us. The frailty of our flesh is not really supposed to be in your presence, but thank you for grace. Thank you for love. Thank you for loving us when we were unlovable. And as we lift our hands today, Father, it's an act of, of, of surrender, but it's also, Father, we're saying, as a good father, pick us up. There are those in this sanctuary, Father, with hands outstretched that are in need of healing. Pick us up. There are those in the sanctuary today, maybe suffering from mental anguish. Pick us up. Breathe peace on us. There are those in the sanctuary today may be at their wits and not quite sure what to expect during the course of this week. Last week was terrible, but Father, pick us up. Breathe hope on us. Love us. Hold us. Forgive us. Restore us. Realign us. But whatever you do, don't drop us. Father, today, don't let us go. Let grace envelop us. And with these same hands lifted, Father, we say thank you. We say we bless you. Ah, We say we give you honor. We give you glory. And we give you praise. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a praise in the house. I mean, we could give the Lord an unashamed praise in this house today. Come on. Hallelujah. Without, without any sense of concern, I believe somebody can lift their voice one more time and give the Lord a praise in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take your seats for a quick minute. As you go now, hug somebody close to you that's touched them and give them Christian greeting. Just before Minister Sheila comes to minister, Anna Mae Cunningham is going to come to read us the declarations today. And right after the declarations... Minister Sheila is going to, to minister the word today. Y'all keep her in prayer. 
If you're joining us today, we wanted to say welcome to our service. Welcome to the Church of God of Prophecy, Elizabeth Estates. And uh, it is good to have you with us today. God bless you. Good morning, good morning. As we declare the word of God over ourselves and our families, let us come into agreement with the word. Let us come into agreement with the word of God. Let us meditate on the word of God and let it be settled in us and transform us in the name of Jesus. Let us raise the bar in our spiritual walk in 2024 so we can live in a higher and holier way every day, drawing nearer to God and see promise he will draw near to us. Seeing ourselves the way God sees us and knowing, and knowing that we belong to God. Genesis, 1, 26 and 27, God says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female created he them. Father, thank you. Thank you for creating us in your image and in your likeness. Thank you for sending Jesus to reconcile us back to you, back to your original plan for our lives in the name of Jesus. We declare we belong to God, created by him for his good pleasure to give him honor, glory, and praise. We declare that we are new creations in Christ, all things are passed away. Behold, the new life in Christ has come in the name of Jesus. We declare that our lives are hidden in Christ and Christ in God in the name of Jesus. We come into agreement with 1 Peter 2 and 9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of, his, of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Lord, thank you for the grace that is over this house and by extension over the homes of every person here in the name of Jesus. Titus 2, 11 and 14 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. Let your grace, Lord, appear to every person in this house. Let your grace appear to every person in our homes, every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl. Let your grace locate our children and their children to a thousand generation in the name of Jesus. Teaching us all that denying ungodliness and living and worldly lusts, we can live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearance of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Who, who gave himself for us that, we, that he might redeem us from lawless deeds and purify for himself his own special people, sell us for good works. Lord, help us to grow in grace and raise the bar in our walk with you in the name of Jesus. Help us to raise the bar in the faith that we have in God. Help us to raise the bar in the confidence that we have in the word of God. Help us to raise the bar in the belief that the Holy Spirit is here with us, in us, 
to help us to practice daily to be like Christ. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Sanctify us, Lord, by your spirit that we may live holy lives because you are holy in the name of Jesus. We declare we who are called, we declare that we can be all that we are called to be through Christ Jesus in the name of Jesus. Let the same mind that be in Christ be in us, transforming our minds to think like Christ in the name of Jesus. Let us declare, come into agreement and declare Romans 8 over us. And we say no. All, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. We declare 2 Corinthians 6, 16 and 17. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separated, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and daughters said the Lord God Almighty. We declare the blessings of God, the favor of God, the faithfulness of God, the goodness of God, the peace of God, and the love of God be on every person here in this house and in your house, in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Good morning. Amen. So good to see all of you this morning been missing for two, what, two weeks, eh? a week, one week, two, and I feel like, I feel like, <laughs> ah, that's a good thing, that's a good thing, I thank God this morning to be in the house of the Lord. I was missing, but I wasn't in hospital. I wasn't sick. My father turned 99 last week Sunday. And so we was worshiping with him. But I give God thanks this morning for as our older sisters would say, for my space here on God's program. <laughs> I thank God this morning, hallelujah, for my space here, thank God. And so I greet all of you this morning in the name of God. I give respect to Pastor Dwight, who is uh, my pastor, my covering, in Christ, and I greet our, and we give respect to our lay ministers and the person of, I think, Brother Devon and Sister Anna Mae Cunningham and Debbie, Sister Debbie Miller. And so I thank God this morning for this opportunity to stand in his presence and stand before you to share his word. I listened to Sister Glennis as she led us in worship today. Um, 
And she talked and shared about the father that she saw in the restaurant. And boy, I know that feeling. Because on the, I think it, my dad came to church with me. And he was, came and sat in the front bench with me. And put his arms around me. And I felt like a little girl. I felt like a little girl sitting there, you know, these little girls, and I, my mind kind of flashed back. We were never a family that went to church. And so we didn't, I, I wouldn't say the little Dorissa dresses with the little stocking and shoes on, and the little crindolin underneath, the little kang kang. But that's, that's what I picture myself that Sunday when he sat and put his arms around me. And then he started whispering in my ears. And he said, honey, our birthday is only 10 days apart, you know. And I said, I know. He said, and the two of us is the same sign. I say, yeah, I know, <laughs> you know. And he was just talking a lot of little things in my ears sitting there. And I felt like a little girl sitting there with him. And so I know that feeling. And it is so wonderful to have, you know, some of us may not have had that experience to have a father with us, you know, while we were growing up or even now. But it's so wonderful to know we have a heavenly father. As we sang about just now, we have this, and the word of God says, and if your earthly father, if my earthly father, shows the pride and, and proud of me like that. You could imagine how our heavenly father, yes, Glennies, how he sees us. You could imagine the word of God says, if our earthly father knows how to give us good gifts. But when we ask of him a, for, for bread, scripture says, would he give you a stone? If you ask him for fish, would he give you a stone? He will give you the fish, and then he'll give you the bread and give you something to wash it down with. You know, our, that's our earthly father. So you could imagine what our heavenly father can do for us. Amen? Amen. Our theme when I start to talk about the goodness of the Lord, my tears are so close. Sometimes I say I must be Jeremiah's sister. Because Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. I say I say, must be Jeremiah's sister. Cry so much. But our theme for the month, as a matter of fact, our theme for the year has been centered on grace. And so our theme for this month as well is grace, grow in grace. And our scripture, Sister Sabrina would have read our scripture this morning in Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3. While I was thinking about that, while I was preparing While I was preparing, I was like asking myself, I said, when you, when you talk about growing in grace, my mind went back on the scripture that talk about as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word so that they may grow thereby. Second Peter chapter 3, and she read from verse 10, was encouraging the saints. Peter was encouraging the saints, he says, but the day of the Lord will come. I think that's why he was encouraging us, because we are living in our, we are living in, in troubling times. 
times. One songwriter say, trouble sometimes causing our hearts to fear. And trouble sometimes are here. And chapter 10, verse 10 say, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. You don't know when the thief come in. You don't know when the thief is coming. And so the scripture says, but the thief will come as a, but he will come. That's how the day of the Lord is coming. When you least expect it. Say, so it's coming as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. He says, therefore, since all of these things will be dissolved. The scripture says the earth and the works will be burned up. The earth and the works will be burned up. Your nice house that you worked so hard to build and put your nice antique furnitures in it. What we don't want the children to sit in. What we work so hard to pay our big mortgage for our big house. And we couldn't come to church and we can't come to Bible study and we can't come to prayer meeting because we got to work because we got to pay mortgage. But the word of God says the elements will melt. With fervent heat. The earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Everything will be dissolved. Everything. Peter says, will be dissolved. Therefore, he says, since all of these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be? God has already told us in his word that the earth was destroyed with water the first time. And this time, Peter is saying, it's going to be destroyed with fire. And so, he's talking to the believers now. He says, so, what you going to do? He says, seeing that all these things, nothing will escape the fervent heat. He says, so what manner of persons then ought to be to be? In holy conduct and godliness. We ought to be living in holy conduct and living godly lives. 
living as though we are expecting the day of the Lord to come. And sometimes I wonder if as believers we really believe that the Lord is coming back. I wonder if we believe that God is coming back. The word of the Lord says when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration. He says the cloud opened and Jesus was taken up in the clouds. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you this day, will also come again in like manner as you see him go. He is coming back. And so Peter says, so then what kind of persons ought you to be? What are you supposed to be doing? Because he's coming back. Looking for the hastening and the coming of the day of God. Because of which the heavens, fire, and the elements will melt in fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth in which righteousness Dwell. We are not this world, Sister Ulysses, is not our home. We are sojourners, we are pilgrims. We are on our way. We are not, we are not, listen, that's why the word of God says in heaven. Lay up your treasures in heaven. You know, I sat, I, I was thinking. And I say, you know, there's a scripture, I think it's in Psalms 49, when it talk about, it talk about, it talk about us as, as, as human beings, as people. It says, we, we, we work hard, and some of us work hard, and we accumulate things. But, 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 but the psalm says, we, we, we buy things, we buy properties, we build houses, we build estates. And, 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 so, and the psalmist David said, and we put our name on the estate. Sheila's ex estate. He said, and then when we die, we leave it for our children. But we can't carry it with us. We can't carry it. We can't carry it. We accumulate all these things. And we can't take nothing with us. The only thing that's going to be accounted for at the end of the day is the kind of life that we lived. The only thing... The word of God says we have to give, we will stand before God and we will give an account. It says for the deeds that we have done. And the scriptures say whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will have to give an account. So, so Peter saying, that the day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord is coming. What are we doing about it? 
How are we making preparation? How, what kind of preparation are we making for the coming of the Lord? 